Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial. We are talking about QuickBooks Online today. Talking about QuickBooks Online specifically for real estate investors. And I wanna talk about one of the most common mistakes I see when investors start their QuickBooks Online account. This is very, very common and it all has to do with the chart of accounts. Now the chart of accounts is really the architecture that runs your QuickBooks, runs your accounting system. So it's really crucial that we get it right at the beginning so that we save ourselves time and headache moving forward, okay? And not only do, is it important that we get it right, it's important that we set it up in a way that helps us run our business, understand our books, understand our numbers, and something that doesn't impede us from running our business, okay? So I wanna talk about that chart of accounts today. And the first thing that a lot of us do when we get a new set of uh, accounts within QuickBooks is we go and we start adding a lot. I'm going to say, don't do that. Try really hard to force yourself to create new accounts based on having a need and having a real actual business purpose for it. Now, we're going to talk about fixed assets. So if you're in real estate investing, you're going to own property at some point in time, right? If you're doing flips or if you're doing rental properties, you're going to own property. So one of the most common things that people will do is when they set up their books, they'll say, hey, I own this property. Let's get it on my books. And they'll go to their chart of accounts and they'll create an account for that property. Okay. So they'll go fixed assets and then they'll go buildings and then they'll say, hey, I have this building called 123 Main Street. All right. Let's get it on the books, right? Now, that is one way to do it, and we might even take that 123 Main Street that we've just added to the books. Let me find it for us here, right here. We might even add sub-accounts to that. Now, why would you add sub-accounts? Well, we might want to differentiate our building from our land, from our CapEx, maybe even our closing costs, okay? So we might go in here and we say, hey, I own this property. It's a fixed asset, okay? It's we're going to put it under buildings here, and I'm going to say 123 Main Street land, okay? Now, land, buildings, I'm just putting it here so that it can go as a sub-account under 123 Main Street, okay? So we can do that right there, all right? So now I'm starting to build out this kind of hierarchy for 123 Main Street. i got the land, and then maybe I do another one for the building. So let's go fixed assets, and let's go buildings, and let's go 123 Main building, Let's make it a sub account and we'll go one, two, three Main Street again. <clears throat> and what I'm doing, I'm going to use this term here. I'm creating what I call a one dimensional chart of accounts. And I'm going to show you why this is not the way to do it, but I want to show you what it looks like first. Okay, I'm going to do one more. Let's say like CapEx, right? So if you're renovating the property, you might want to separate that out. So CapEx, and I'll just do. One, two, three, main CapEx, all right? <clears throat> all right, so let's start there, and then let's let's put something onto our balance sheet. So I'm gonna go back in time, way back in time to 2016. I have nothing on my balance sheet here, so I can demonstrate this. So let's say that I record the purchase of this property. Now, if you don't know how to record the purchase of a property, we have several videos out about that, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail on that here. But I'm just going to take that one, two, three, main street, and I'm going to say that we have the building, and then we have the land, and then we have, uh, I won't, yeah, I'll do some CapEx too um, when I purchase this. So let's say that the building's worth $100,000 or $75,000, land is worth twenty five, dollars and then I put $15,000 into it. Okay, and you could probably already saw that I had a another you know, one, two, three Main Street mortgage as well that I could I could put on that. Okay, so if I do this, I'm going to see this all on my balance sheet, hopefully. Let's see. Okay, there it is. So there's one, two, three Main Street, the building, the CapEx, the land. Okay, so it's looking good. That's my balance sheet. So here's where the problem comes into play when we do it this way. The problem is when we own more than one property. All right, I'm going to demonstrate exactly how that happens. Let's say we buy another property. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my chart of accounts. And I am going to add more accounts for a new property that we're going to buy. All right. So I own 123 Main Street. Let's say that I then purchase 34 Long Avenue. Okay. So fixed assets. 
I have my buildings, I'm gonna create 34 long. I'm gonna create the parent first. All right, and then I'm just gonna create those other three. So let's go fixed assets, 34 long land is a sub account of 34 long. All right, I'm gonna do save and new, save myself some time there. Fixed asset building, let's do 34 long building is a sub account of 34 long. So I got my land, I got my building. Let's do one more. CapEx. All right, so now my chart of accounts, I'm gonna have the one, two, three mainstream, I have the 34 long, okay? Let's record the purchase of property and see how that all works. So I'm gonna go back to my balance sheet, 2016, and I'm going to do a new journal entry for the purchase of this 34 long property. Again, back in time, just so I have a nice clean balance sheet. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up my 34 long building, CapEx, land, okay? Let's say that the building was worth 220, put 35 into it, and the land is worth 35,000. And then let's say that I have a mortgage for this as well. I don't think I have one yet. Oh, I do. There it is right there, boom. Okay, so let's save and close this, okay? So now this is one way that we could do it. And you see here, I have all my one, two, three Main Street stuff. I have all my 34 long stuff. Here's the problem. If I buy any more property, my balance sheet is going to get gigantic. If we picture potentially owning five, six, 10, 15, 20 properties, my balance sheet is going to get absolutely huge. Okay, now I haven't even put in depreciation here yet. I could have, and I will probably have depreciation as well. So building depreciation, CapEx depreciation, I'm gonna have more lines. I'm gonna have bank accounts, I'm gonna have credit cards. This balance sheet was empty before I made two transactions and I already have like eight lines here. And it's going to get crazy. QuickBooks Online, more than anything else, more than helping you prepare for taxes, it's a tool to help you understand the health of your business, the financial health of your business. And in order to do that, you need to have a report that's relatively easy to read. And this, I'm telling you, will not be it. If we add a ton more properties, it's going to get gigantic. So that's problem number one. We do not want a gigantic balance sheet. Problem number two is we are not taking advantage of QuickBooks calculations, okay? What do I mean by that? This is one dimensional. I see one, two, three Main Street, then I see 34 long. Then down here I see my mortgages. Where on here can I say, what is the equity that I have in one, two, three Main Street? So let's say I start paying down my mortgage, it goes down to 110,000. Where on here do I see that 115 minus 115? No place at all, okay? I don't see it anywhere. So let me tell you what I'm talking about. Let's say that I made a, um, a payment on my mortgage, okay? So on that 123 Main Street mortgage, I paid off $2,000, okay? Let's say that I did that. So my mortgage balance is now 113, okay? Where do I see that I have $2,000 in equity? I'd have to do that math myself. I'd have to look at Main Street, then I'd have to look at Main Street, and I'd have to say 2,000, all right? And then for long, I'd have to look at 605 minus 605. And imagine if we had this for 20 properties. It's gonna get crazy. It's going to become impossible, all right? It's not useful for us. So we need a different solution. We need to convert the, our balance sheet from a one-dimensional chart of accounts to what I call a two-dimensional chart of accounts, okay? We can use generic accounts making use of another indicator, which I'm gonna use class, to make it two-dimensional. All right, so follow me, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. First thing we gotta do, turn on class tracking. In this example, I'm gonna use class tracking. If you wanna use customer, you can. If you wanna use location, you can. But I think for this example, it's simpler to use class tracking, okay? So you need to have QuickBooks Online plus or above. I'm gonna go to accounts and settings. And in my advanced here, Actually, it's an expensive, no, it isn't advanced. Yep, categories, turn on classes. I'm going to turn that on, okay? 
and I do like to warn me when a transaction isn't assigned to a class, and I'll do one row in the, uh, to each row in the transaction. Save that and mark it done. So I'm going to have a class per property. Now I've already set these up, okay? So these should already exist. I'll show you them. To, to see the list of classes, you can go to your settings and then go to all lists. And then within that, we should have classes. And you can see I have a list of classes. So I got one, two, three Main Street here. I have 34 long here. All right. <clears throat> so I've established my classes, so that's great. The next thing I need to do is I need to convert my chart of accounts to a more generic chart of accounts. And I already have that going on. You might have already seen it. So what I do is for my property, I have a really structured set of accounts and it's really generic and we're looking at it right here, okay? So I have this overarching parent account called real estate. Within real estate, I have land, buildings, purchase closing costs, and CapEx. We're gonna ignore added market value for now. That is a advanced technique, we do not need that for now. Okay, so I have these, this is my super generic, I use this for, for all my clients that I set up. We have these four accounts, and three of them are depreciated and or, or amortized, okay? So I have the original, what I paid for the building, and then I have the depreciation that I log against it. My closing costs, which we can capitalize as well, I have the original, what I paid for it, and then what I amortize on it. CapEx, same thing. What I paid for my renovations and then how I depreciate it. We're gonna use these accounts right here. Similarly, on our mortgage, our long-term liability, let's find that, where did I put that? Conventional loan, we can just have a really simple conventional loan first position and just use that. And that's what I'm gonna do, okay? We don't need to use these specific ones. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to adjust my entries that I made here and put them back into my generic account, okay? So let's go into, I'm gonna drill down into this journal entry and Notice that class now shows up here. So this is 123 Main Street. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in 123 Main Street as my class here. Okay, great. And now I'm gonna make this generic. Meaning, I'm just going to go to buildings, and in this case, original cost. I'm gonna do land here. Here I'm gonna do CapEx, original cost, not depreciation. And here I'm gonna do first position, conventional mortgage first position. All right, I'm gonna save and close that. Then I'm gonna to go to that transaction that I made for 34 long. Notice what's going on here. So that, that uh, 123 Main Street started filling into this kind of generic one. I'm gonna take that 34 long and do the same thing with it. Here I'm going to indicate my class is 34 long. Now if you're using customer, you can use customer right here. Okay, you can do it just like this. So you can do a similar setup with customer. And you don't need QuickBooks Online Plus for customer. Okay, so instead of the 34 long building, I'm just going to do the building's original cost. Again, I'm going to generic here. CapEx, original cost. Why do we not depreciate land? You cannot depreciate land. So that's why we don't have, um, have that in there. And then we're gonna do, instead of conventional mortgage for 30 foot long, I'm gonna do first position. Okay, save and close. Go back to my summary report. The other thing I want to edit is that transaction that I made, that $2,000 that I paid toward that loan. It's going to go not to the 123 Main Street loan. It's going to go to one, or it's, it's going to go to first position, and I'm going to indicate the class right there. Okay. So let's look at my balance sheet right now. Okay. Here I have my total real estate, so all of my land, all of my building, all of my CapEx, and then my total loans, okay? So for one, we can already tell that my balance sheet has gotten a lot smaller. In fact, it's been cut in half. 
So again, envision that we have 20 properties. Instead of having 20 times like three accounts and having 60 going huge, we're still gonna have these, these four, five, six accounts no matter what. So think about scaling your business, think about buying more property, we're able to account for that. Similar to the mortgages, if we have 20 properties, we want to want 20 different mortgages, right? So we can have it in one. Now, so I said two-dimensional, so what, what does that mean? How is this two-dimensional? How do I differentiate here what is 34 Long, what is 123 Main Street? That's where we're able to make use of that class that I indicated and display columns by, if I move this to classes, right there, you see I have 123 Main Street, then I have 34 Long, and look, I have land for each, buildings for each, CapEx for each, and then a total for each. So 123 Main Street is worth 115,000. 34 Long is worth 605,000, okay? And then here are my loans down here, 113, 605, okay? So we can see that in there. We can really easily take the 115 and uh, understand the, the 113 down here. We can say, okay, 115 minus 113, $2,000 worth of equity. All right, this is a two-dimensional chart of accounts. We do the same thing with our profit and loss too. We don't have like a repairs and maintenance for 123 Main Street, repairs and maintenance 34 Long, one, uh, repairs and maintenance for 456 Maple. We have a really generic, nice, tight, neat chart of accounts, and then we put our properties across the top as classes. This is a game changer, okay? So if you are new to QuickBooks Online or if you've been using it for a while and you have this gigantic chart of accounts, that is a warning sign that you are not using QuickBooks efficiently. QuickBooks Online is going to limit how many accounts you can use, right? They're going to say, hey, 250 is your max. You shouldn't get close to 250 accounts. You should have 100 at the max. Honestly, most of my customers end up with about 60 or so. Once you've kind of made this generic, we can, we can eliminate all of these. We can make these all inactive. We have a nice, neat chart of accounts. All right, so that's essential that we get our chart of accounts right. In this case, we're talking about our fixed assets. Making use of that two-dimensional chart of accounts is essential. All right. I teach this and so much more in Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. That is our end-to-end -end course. We talk about the setup. We talk about the importance of establishing that architecture. If you're a real estate investor and you're using QuickBooks to manage your books, give it a try. Check out Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. We go through so much detail in there to make sure that QuickBooks is really a tool to help you manage your books as opposed to this gigantic burden that you only pop open at tax time and even then it seems like it's doing more harm than good. As always, check out all the free resources we have available at IncomeNews.com. Let me know if you have any questions or comments and I will see you on the next video.